Oh, boys and girls, it is the most wonderful time of the year. That behind me is the London XL. Inside the London XL is MCM London Comic Con, the biggest and most awesome Comic Con in the UK. It's probably my favorite weekend of the year. Every year, the May one, better than the October one because we have this beautiful sunshine, lovely weather to experience it. But I'm not here for beautiful sunshine and lovely weather. I'm here to go and wander around in a dark hall look at comic books and action figures and other nerdy things and I can't wait to bring you along with me so come on let's go and have a little look inside shall we and we are in full disclosure this is the Friday of Comic-Con so although it's still pretty busy compared to some of those ones from the last couple of years that were a little quiet it is nothing like Saturday at Comic-Con I say this every time I do one of these videos just so people are fully aware of what to expect if this was Saturday I would be shoulder to shoulder in this little area here. As it is, it's just pleasantly busy. It's Friday lunchtime, the show's been open about three hours, and now we're gonna head in and have a little explore. So we are in, normally, Comic-Con will take up the halls on this side, and also the other side of the little central uh, gangway area. So in here, we've got loads of food trucks down this side that has pretty much every type of food you can possibly imagine. There's other food places scattered around the show as well. And then we get started with vendors. And this one is, this one is always in this spot actually. This is the little apothecary potion bottles. Anna does like them. Probably gonna have to pick some of them up as the weekend goes on. And then it's right next to the one that I like that has all the sports memorabilia. Um, last time I was here, I bought an Ivan Tony boot. In fact, they have the Ivan Tony boot again. Um, I could get the matching pair. I'm more interested immediately though in that Cody Rhodes Intercontinental title, which is quite cool. Um, they've got various football shirts and bits and bobs on here as well, which is all very, very snazzy. I'm never 100% confident that the stuff on there is completely legit and it is a little bit of a shame that the Cody Rhodes belt is a, is a little kiddie's toy belt because it makes it less impressive on my display behind me. but. There is some cool stuff on there. I can't buy stuff within minutes of arriving at the event. I need to do a full lap before I start spending any money. But certainly these first two stands for Anna, for me, that's where money is likely to be spent unless there's loads of very cool toys elsewhere. I mean, like we've immediately got on the next stand, loads of cool toys and comic books. It's quite rare to see a comic book in Comic-Con these days. But we've got some there to kick things off. I'm not going to show you everything that's here because, like I say, it is the biggest Comic-Con in the country. It is genuinely enormous. I mean, if we get to the end of this walkway, you can see just how far down there this event goes. We've got stuff on both sides, just stalls all the way down. And then this repeats itself on the other side of the walkway out there as well. So there is a lot to see. And my job now, of course, is to find the best bits so that I can show you them. I thought I'd introduce you to my new buddy. He's not very talkative, but he is very large. One thing I'm already noticing that seems to be more of a part of the convention than it has been in previous years is the lounge fly bags that seem to be everywhere. There's obviously not as many lounge fly bags as there are pop vinyls, but more so than I've seen previously. I mean, there's just so many pop vinyls. We are operating Kevin rules again, so if I see any pop vinyl called Kevin, no matter what media property it is from, we have to purchase it. They're just the rules, which means I have to really try and avoid. Oh, hold, that. Ah, see, Kevin rules straight away. I already have Kung Fu Kevin though. We've bought him on Kevin rules previously. We are trying to avoid anything for Home Alone though, because Kevin from Home Alone is usually about 80 quid. So I don't want to have to buy him, but there's my first Kevin spot of the day. Oh, and there's Sheepdog right next to me. Now, I've probably already got all of these AEW figures because I am a monster who buys them all when they first come out. However, I never got those Young Bucks pops when they were a thing. So I'm looking at that thinking, that's pretty cool. 45 pounds is a lot, but that's pretty cool. I also don't think I've got that Hangman and Kenny Omega tag team set either which I don't remember seeing on Ringside Collectibles. So both of those look very interesting. It is an £85 purchase to go for both of those though. So once again, got to keep reminding myself, first lap. We don't buy anything on the first lap. 
We are supposed to come into these events with a budget. I never do. I'm already thinking I probably need to set a budget before we commence lap two. All right, let's have a little mooch through these. And normally, the uh, the really cool ones are hidden in this camping Keep wardrobe. His death from Sandman. There... But no Kevin's in there, it seems. Although they have got Razor Ramon, which is quite cool. Um, Frodo Baggins, that's your nickname at college. Yeah. I've now got so many pop vinyls from so many years of coming to events like this. But I kind of walk into these stands kind of wanting stuff, but also being really happy when I survive a pop vinyl stand without having to spend any money, because I certainly don't need any more, and I certainly don't have anywhere to put them. Must walk away. I'm trying to convince Sheepdog to get one of these wigs. He said he'll, uh, he'll wear a wig all day if I buy it and give him £250. I think if I can get him up to all day and all night and all weekend, even when he's not with me, then I think that's a deal I'm happy with, as long as I get to choose the wig. It's very rare that I have a reason to run off across the show floor, but then it's also very rare that from two aisles away, I spy Kevin off of up. I don't know why, I ran past a lot of the other stuff. There's a stage and things going on back there. This is the main event though. Brilliant. We've reached that problematic point of the day where I've not had lunch, despite it being lunchtime. Over here, they have many sweets. Over here, they have many hot sauces. And I'm contemplating just combining the two and calling it lunch. As usual, I am on the hunt for socks for Anna. It's all she ever wants when I come to these events. I got her those exact ones in October, I think. She does like a shark sock. I don't know that we're going to get any of these ones straight away. But... I think Dave did eat the shark ones that we got back in October, so I could just replace them with the exact same pair again and then watch Dave destroy them a second time. Well, I've not exactly been looking for them, so I don't know for sure this is true, but I think that is my first exposure to Pokemon cards since we've been here. I've been pretty good since the Scarlet and Violet sets have come out. I've not spent loads on them, I've just bought a few packs, but I feel like today might be the day we just buy a load of Pokemon cards because when in Rome and all that. I think this is like the third time I've seen this movie poster stall since we've been in here. Occasionally walking around Comic-Con, it does get a little bit like being in an episode of Scooby-Doo, where you just feel like you're going past the same stalls over and over and over again. Got a uh, fella on a space camel back there. Don't know if it's from a movie or anything. Probably not a big one. Do you want your picture taken with the no, space no, camel? Are you sure, no, Babby? I don't want to get that bothered. Do you want your picture taken with the space camel? I'm all right, I've been in photographs with many space camels. Get out of there, got to go. Found a big pile of Pokemon cards. Um, not got particularly bargain-tastic convention pricing. A Scarlet and Violet booster box, 120 quid. They were doing the new releases for 100 pounds a box last year, so. I think we're going to have to do better than 120 to convince me to buy a box. That being said, do really want one. Kind of been holding off to buy one in person at, the, at an event like this. So that's tucked away in here. And we might loop back around. They've got plenty. I don't think they're going to be selling out at 120 pounds. More lounge fly bags on the Funko Pop stand. I suspect that when we go to Disneyland this year, this will be the year that Anna takes the plunge and becomes a lounge fly person. And at that point, I'm in trouble. Because they're so expensive. Right, that Spider-Man one over there is very cool. Okay, this might be my favorite stall so far. I kind of want the Asterix water bottle that's at the back there. But I could quite happily have one of everything on here. This is awesome. This is basically my childhood. I want it all. Right, as is usually the way, we need to uh, have a quick glance through to see if we can find a giraffe rig in the wild. We've never found one yet. And I don't think today's gonna be the day either. One day we'll get a giraffe rig. I do have one, someone sent me one that they bought in Japan, but I need to find one as well. You gotta catch your own as well. They're just the rules of Pokemon. So we're officially halfway through. We've disappeared because it's half past two. We've not had any lunch yet, but there's a new place down there. There's Poke Bowls. So I'm very happy. This is the 
creator room. As you can see, absolutely heaving. But we're gonna recharge in here, fill ourselves up on free beverages, and then go and do the other haul. Very busy today. Dinner consumed, we are now heading back down to the far end of the XO so that we can start from one end of the other hall and work our way down, similar to how we did in the first one. We have been in here getting on for four hours at this point. And we're only halfway through. I'm on the wrong side here. This is where we went in earlier, isn't it? That side. I was going in the wrong one. I've gone too far. As usual, I've gone too far because the halls on this side are shut. So it's actually up that way, the other side of this costa. So it should be just around this corner. This hall is likely to be less of a car boot sale and more bigger stands, that's how it usually is. We've got the main stage over there, which is quite loud. So once we come into this hall, you can see that the back there, we've got all of the autographs and meet and greet stuff. Over here, we've got Pokemon and magic card grading. And then you get some of the uh, stands from some of the, the media stuff that's in here. What not have a stage here? Well, look there, I don't think what not have been here before. They must be one of the event sponsors. Pokemon original sealed VHS tapes. There you go. What more could you want? And that's where all of the photos and autograph things are. I have no idea who's here. And even if I saw a list, chances are I won't have heard of any of them. I have no idea what this thing is. Vogged. But they've got a poster there that says, ever dreamt of being a streamer? And then balloons and a thing that you spin on. So I think I'm doing streaming wrong. We've got Paramount Shop, which has got some of these cool rubber ducks that we've seen before. Unfortunately, they are Star Wars, therefore less cool. And then, oh, are these, are these those things we saw last year? That had a tiny little area, but there's a shop over, uh, over near Forbidden Planet. Yeah, these are quite cool. This is, this is your new Funko Pops, boys and girls. Keep your eyes out for Pop Mart. We said that last year, and their stall this year is three times the size, so clearly there is some growth going on. But they have really cool little, they're smaller than Funko figures, but uh, they are very cool. Oh, they've got minions. Yeah, but yeah, they're blind boxes, that's the problem. So I can't just buy a Kevin, I have to buy all the minions. I do want a minion. Yeah, these are very cool, but they all come in little blind boxes. What you can do is buy the whole set. So it's nine pounds for an individual blind box or 120 for the full set for the minions. I don't want them that much, but they are cool. Very, very cool. And there's the sign and a sheepdog and a sign. All right, so this is Mighty Jack which has got lots of little uh, licensed toys, including a, uh, I don't know what he's pointing at, Stranger Things, My Little Pony. He is a brony after all, he loves a My Little Pony. Um, but yeah, want more minions. I do like a minion. I can see Pab in that. Okay, they're quite cool. They're from the, um, from the NFTs, aren't they? So now you can buy them as real art rather than fake art. They've actually got some value there. And here we have Whatnot, which I've not used yet, but I figure it's probably right up my street. So if anyone from Whatnot is watching and wants to sponsor me, I'll jump on Whatnot and sell some Funkos and some other stuff out of my storage unit. But they've got quite a snazzy little uh, mirror area just to get people to do selfies. Oh, look at us. Look, we're doing a selfie. Look at all the lights. Yeah, it's pretty. The ceiling's lit as well. Oh, 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 oh. I do. So that was cool. Like I say, what not? You know how to find me. Just uh, catching up one of my other buddies as well while I'm in here. These shoes are very cool. Probably not, uh, probably not suiting me, but they are very, very cool. And then we've got TikTok shop over there. Brilliant. Glad they're here. 
and then the MCM official store. This is all pretty chaotic over here. It's not in nice neat aisles like it is over in the other area because everyone's got these bigger stands, so it's hard to make sure we're seeing everything. Oh, we've got a Punch and Judy show going on. Amazing. So there's the official MCM store for anyone in the market for that stuff. And then we're on to Bandai Namco, who last time had these robots. Have they got the robots again? They're just little models. I don't want a little model. I want a robot that actually wanders around. We've got games. Hark Beyond, that was here last time, but it is actually now out pretty soon. More of the uh, little robots, fellas. And then more games more robot fellas. I feel like I'm squeezing between two stands here. What have we got over here? More games. A bunch of coats. That's a really hot TV. I just ran my arm along that and it was warm. And then we've kind of emerged in more Bandai Namco stuff. I don't really know what this stuff is actually, just more of these collectible things. They've got the HRO NFT trading cards over here, which I got the first wave of, the DC ones, and then kind of abandoned because it was just a weird thing I never fully got into, but they are pretty cards. They're just really expensive because of the NFT element. And the NFT element, of course, is a load of bobbins. I'm getting so turned around. So we've got Tokyo Toys over there. I don't think we've seen any of that stuff yet. I've lost Cheap Dog and Pab. This Bandai Namco area is big. There's a lot of stuff in here. Are they vending machines? It's the vending machines again. I like a vending machine. Very disappointed to see that on the vending machines this time there's no giraffes. Very sad. It does save, I think they're a five or a token. So it has saved me a little bit of money, but uh, I would like a giraffe. See, this is what I mean about getting turned around. We're now walking back towards this hot vinyl and t-shirt shop that we just, I guess we kind of went the long way around and completely missed. I think we were over there before. So we missed all this. And this is an enormous one. On the hunt for Kevins. I would like an apology on record. The longer the day goes on, the warmer it gets in here and the sweatier and shinier I become. It seems unavoidable at this point, but it is warm in here. Pokemon hats. Right. Let's go find a Pokemon hat from good old Tokyo Toys. What have we got? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a giraffe? Of course there's no giraffe rig. There was never going to be, but I would absolutely buy a giraffe rig hat. There seems to be lots of Pokemon in this hall, so we will have a proper oh, look when I finish mooching around in here. I always enjoy visiting Tokyo Toys. I don't think I've ever bought anything from them, but it is always cool. Lots of goodies. Surely somewhere in this tower of Pokemon, there has to be the elusive giraffe rig somewhere. It doesn't exist. Years I've been searching for one in the wild. They don't exist. Oh, we've got more over here. Do we try again? The chances of there being one in this small selection is probably pretty slim. Yeah, none over there. And then we've got more over there. We've definitely hit the Pokemon area. Looks like we've got cards over here as well, which is dangerous territory for me to enter. And then more plushies. Around here, a Pokemon mystery box. Imagine if I got a Pokemon mystery box and that had a giraffe rig in. Can you imagine? The crowd would go wild. Any joy in here? No, very sad. We've made it into the American suites and I've got to say, America, you're weird if a sour pickle passes as sweets. I mean, that is, that is a spicy cucumber and vinegar for £3.50. Or we can have a tapatio pickle. Since when were pickles sweets? 
I think Anna's got all of the various Nuka Colas now through years of coming to these events. So we've got some Pokemon mystery bags over here, which have our one in three chance of having a PSA 10 inside, apparently. Interesting. I suspect if I buy three, I won't get a PSA 10. Or it'll be a rubbish one that I'd have no interest in uh, having as a graded card. More toys, though. I do like a toy. What have we got over here? Spider-Man, X-Men, various Marvel toys, Transformers, G.I. Joe, all of the toys. No wrestlers, though, on here. Years ago, there would always be a wrestling stand that had figures, memorabilia, belts, that kind of thing. And that hasn't been here since pre-pandemic. I guess they probably went out of business, which is a real shame because it was awesome. But since then, there has been a, a massive void of wrestling stuff at this event. Well, here we go. We have found convention prices. £100 for a Scarlet and Violet booster box there. So I'm probably not going to buy it now. But before this event is over, this is the spot. £100 is my sweet spot. And I will absolutely buy it for that. That will be my first, my first proper booster box of the Scarlet and Violet. Like I say, I've bought some individual packs, but not not on mass just yet look at all the lounge fly bags as well like i say it's very much been a theme of this event that lounge fly has basically taken over there is some cool stuff there <laughs> all together now boys and girls don't buy convention mystery boxes they're full of trash maybe we'll get anna some socks from here before the weekend is done without fail always the biggest food queues Oh, when you get into this area for all the uh, for the Japanese bits and bobs whenever I've come to these conventions with the girls they've had to get involved in this I usually manage to give it a miss but it always smells good and is well worth a walk down that area over here we have retro gaming I guess Xbox 360 retro apparently original Xbox in there as well and then we've got more gaming shenanigans stuff over here. The Cyber Power bus is here. That was at Insomnia a month or so back. And we've got some arcade machines over there as well before we get to another wall of food trucks over there with much smaller queues than any of the Japanese bits and bobs. And we've got some Game Boy games over there. Very snazzy indeed. Well, there you go. We have completed a full lap. It's just after four o'clock. So it has taken us the best part of a day to complete a lap. It is noticeable that there's none of like the big TV shows, movies, big games, anything like that here. Even when we were here back in October, so this isn't just a post-pandemic thing. Even when we were here back in October, there was a whole thing for the Lord of the Rings TV show, various other bits and bobs. It just, that all seems to be missing, which I guess isn't really what I come to a convention for. I'm much happier with that first haul that has all of the um, all of the traders and stuff in there, which is why I spent so much more time in there than I have in here. It probably took me the best part of three hours to get through the first hall, maybe an hour to do this one. It's still very, very cool. It's a shame that Funko still haven't come back since the pandemic, but it's still a full day to do one lap of just nerdy awesomeness. So I can't really complain. And now what I need to do is head around again and make my purchases before I head back and check into my hotel. We are going to be doing things a little bit different for the vlogs from this weekend this year. Normally, I would spread them out into three days. You'd be a little bit of convention each day and that would be it. Not so much how we're doing it this time. This is the one and only London Comic Con vlog. So, hey, future Kev, if there's anything else you need to put in, put that in here. At this point, I don't know whether he did or not, but if he did, bet it was great. If he didn't, didn't need to. It was great on its own. But uh, yeah, the rest of the weekend, we've got some other cool stuff planned, which will be appearing as separate videos about those things over the next couple of weeks. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video from London Comic Con May 2023. If you have, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel for loads more content like this, travel vlogs, we come to all the conventions. We're at the UK Games Expo next week. So there's lots more convention stuff to come as well as all of our other travel bits and bobs. And thank you very much for watching. Toodle pip.